Nick, there's some rumors swirling around about Nick Foles and Reese. I kind of feel like we might have been part of the stem of it because uh, there's, there's, it's kind of weird and uh, <laughs> I don't want to give us too much credit, but we were on this about a week ago or a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about this is that Nick Foles might be considering yeah. opting out. That's the rumor. Okay. And it kind of began to spur sporadically on Twitter after Eddie Goldman opted out. And, um, you know, we talked about the, potentially Nick Foles opting out a couple of weeks ago because, hey, he has a family. He just had a baby. He's known to be a really good, you know, family guy. And it would make sense that he would want to put his family first, you know? Um, this, since this rumor came right. out, it's been shot down by guys like Mike Garofolo, like some, some real high quality reporters that, you know, have their own ins, ins in the industry and everything like that. Um, but, I still wouldn't be surprised. Like I don't, I don't, I believe that Nick Foles hasn't, you know, made a decision yet, and he has no plans of opting out currently. But I mean, if things get worse, who knows? Yeah, exactly. Who knows? And it's with everything that's going on, you know, having a new kid. Um, I think his isn't his wife like possibly at risk or something. At least that's part of the rumors I heard that his wife is maybe a, more yeah. at risk or something to that. So there's a lot, you know, at stake for him. And like you said, being a big family guy. So, you know, it's definitely not out of the possibility. I mean, what, you know, Nick Foles has accumulated a lot over his NFL career. What does he really have to lose other than just, you know, his year of contract money, which is obviously very sizable. But at the same time, you know, I'm sure his family means a lot more to him than simply like one year of, of pay, you know, of his NFL contract. So I it would mm-hmm. not I would not be blown out of the water. If that ends up being the case, I mean, especially too, you know, if you put together, you know, the current quarterback situation, not saying that Nick Foles definitely isn't going to be the starter, but you know, that it's been trending more towards Mitchell Trubisky. Maybe he's like, well, if there's a chance, I'm just going to be sitting on the bench being the backup quarterback. Why, why bother risk it, you know, and be around all the other guys that could get me sick and could have very negative health impacts on my family. You know, what's the point? Another person that I kind of worry about is Chuck Pagano. Uh, he notably is a cancer survivor, and cancer survivors actually, you know, are of higher risk when it comes to this disease because of different, you know, compromised immune systems. Maybe they take medicine or wh- whatever that may be. So I do worry about Chuck Pagano, and truthfully, like we need Chuck Pagano, but I, I, if he needs to like somehow like stay in the booth and like stay away from people or something when he's play calling, I would be, you know, happy for that because I want Chuck Pagano to be healthy. He's also older. You just think there's a lot of NFL coaches, GMs that are older in the most dangerous population that this disease affects. So, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be kind of difficult to really, uh, to re- to really get past that, you know? Like that that is an, a harsh reality in the NFL. Yeah, with Chuck Pagano, I'm sure that, you know, if he ended up needing to be moved up to the booth or even kind of needed a space to himself, I'm sure they could accommodate that in some way somehow. Um, mm-hmm. especially with this current situation. It just brought up in my head. I remember like last college football season, I swear there was some college football coach that was literally up in the booth in like a hospital bed. It was <laughs> really like, I swear, bro. So that just it made me think of like that being the case with Chuck Pagano. Oh my like gosh. a pretty pretty weird thought. But uh yeah, I think that you know, I would have to think especially too like, you know, being that I watch soccer too, like I've noticed that in the like, Premier League what they play in England, like they spaced out like their substitutes like all throughout like the stands, you mm-hmm. know. To give them like the proper like six foot like that apart, makes sense. you know, give everyone plenty plenty of room. So if you think about it, you know, I almost at this point, I feel like there's absolutely no chance there's going to be fans in the stadium. Yeah. So unless you're in you Florida, might as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. But um, or Texas, who you know, University of Texas uh, claim that they're going to have fifty percent capacity at yeah, their football right. games. But uh, seems like yeah, a smart choice. I think that. <laughs> you know, outside of all the big ad banners they can put, they have plenty of, you know, seats to work with. So you might as well space everyone out and make it as safe as you possibly can. And, you know, I'm sure, you know, if that means sticking coordinators up in booths or giving them their own, like, suite to operate out of, I mean, just make it happen, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not. Why not? You know, yeah. we're going to have plenty of space 
if we end up playing in the regular stadiums, which seems to be the plan. Um, but I guess we're just going to have to see how that develops. Um, it, I, it wouldn't surprise me if some more of our starters opt out. I think that that's going to be a reality for a lot of teams in the NFL. I think that the New England Patriots already had seven people opt out. So it's it's one of those things where it's like, it's just going to happen. We're going to have to play. It's going to be a harsh reality. There's plenty of players who have, you know, different types of conditions or whatever that puts them put them at higher risk or maybe they're you know like Nick Foles welcoming a new baby to the family or their wife has a condition where you know you can't blame them and it's we talk consistently about how this is going to be a really weird NFL season and whoever wins the Super Bowl is uh, going to be a really weird team so you know uh, yeah. we'll, we'll just have to uh, kind of go from there with whatever news we get. Hey guys, like our video, subscribe, and check out our bi-weekly podcast on Apple Podcasts. Thanks.